What's up guys, my name is Michael Aris and welcome to my photography channel. Now today is a landmark day for this channel because I got my first person that wanted me to look over their church images. Now for those of you who follow my photography channel, you know that at the end of each video, I say that if you want me to look over your stuff, just email me your images and I'll give you my thoughts. And a new subscriber emailed me and told me, hey, you know what, look at my images, Tell me what you think. So that's what we're doing here today and let's get started. All right, so the email says, I found your YouTube channel and I'm so glad I did because I like the way that you explain. Oh, how nice. I like photography and the pastor of my church asked me to take some photos and honestly, I did the best that I could. I would appreciate your opinion and help on my work. My photography gear is pretty basic. I shoot with the Canon 80D. That's not pretty, that's not a basic camera. That's actually a really good camera. And the lenses I shoot with are the 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens the 55 through 250 millimeter lens, and a 50 millimeter 1.8 prime lens. That's a really good lens. I shoot my images in RAW plus JPEG, and I edit my images using Lightroom, the iPhone version. This is the work that I've done so far. How can these photos look more professional? Well, first off, thank you so much to the photographer for giving us a nice background on what they're working with. We know their lenses, we know their cameras, and we know now what software they're using to edit their photos. All right, and without further ado, Let's look at their first image. Now the first image that we have here is a woman praying at her chair. Now right away I already know what I like about this image. First we have the empty chairs off to the side. Now of course empty chairs could possibly be a bad thing in some images. But in this photograph I think it works because it kind of helps narrow down the main subject in this photograph. And what the chairs kind of do is help lead the viewer's eye into the middle of the photograph to the main subject. So the chairs being used as leading lines, I like that. The second thing I like about this image is the woman in the foreground. I like that she she kind of gives a little bit of depth to the image because we know that she's not the main focus of the image, but we know that if you look beyond her, we see what we really wanted to see, which is the person on the chair praying. Now that's my initial thoughts of what I liked about this image. And for the critiquing portion, we can start off by saying that the image might be a little bit too high. Personally, what I would like to see is photographers kind of be equal eye length to their subject. Perspective in photographs is a very important concept that lets people know that this is a professional looking photograph and not a photograph taken from an iPhone. And I'm not saying that this photograph looks like it's taken with an iPhone, but you would be surprised how an image can look different by just bending your knees and just kind of getting a more eye level shot to your subject. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Now this is a photograph that I've taken many months ago, and I can tell that it's many months ago because I don't edit the exact same way at all anymore. But if you look at this image right here, we're more eye level with the person that's praying. And of course we have the leading lines of the chairs leading directly to the face of the woman that's praying. Now another example of a praying photo that I can share would be of this gentleman right here. I decided to go once again eye level to him and use the chairs as, as a bit of a foreground leading up to him praying with his hands on his face. It's that subtle shift of perspective that kind of makes an image look better than if you're just kind of photographing from a distance and aiming down at your subject. So going back to the original photograph, I think next Sunday, Try to work on the perspective, bending your knees, getting lower, being more eye level to your subjects. You'd be thoroughly amazed at how much images could be dramatically improved by just the simple perspective change. Another critique that I have about this photograph would be that the woman on the very far right seems to be awkwardly chopped off. Now I chop off people in my images who are not the main subjects quite often. I just think that with this image, it just kind of looks as if you didn't compose the photo correctly because the woman's back and arm seem to be chopped off just slightly. I would say either commit to having the full body or crop in a little bit tighter and using the lady as more of a foreground. Crop in the image and making it a little bit tighter like this. Yep, I like that a lot better. It makes it even easier for a person to realize who the subject actually is. All right, on to the next one. All right, so we have another photo of a woman and praying. And this image right here, once again, I like the leading lines of the chairs. You do follow the chairs and kind of look at each portion of the chair to see if there is even a subject there. And once we do that, again, we realize there's a woman praying and that's the main subject. Now going to the critiquing portion of this photograph, you're standing up higher than your subject and you have a camera that's already at a high angle aiming down at your subject, which sometimes can be flattering, but in this case, I don't think it is because we don't really see her hands folded in prayer. We just kind of see a face that's looking down. Also, another thing that I noticed here in this image is that the focus seems to be on the back of the chairs. So that's another thing to keep in mind is to make sure that your photos are tack sharp because it's kind of a bummer when you realize while editing that a really cool looking photo that you had might be ruined because it's actually out of focus. But going back to the perspective thing, there is an easy way to go around it and kind of make it look more creative. Now this is a photograph that I've taken recently at one of our church prayer meetings, and I took many angles of this woman praying. But again, going back to perspective, I bend my knees and was eye to eye with the woman that was praying at this chair and used the chair as a leading line 
leading from the top of the image down to the woman that's praying. Now, if I was standing up in front of her with my camera and aiming from a high angle going down, this photograph wouldn't be as impactful because the more lower and eye level you get to your subjects, the more intimate the photograph looks as a whole. And because I got lower, I was able to get more lights in the photograph in the background, helping make the image look a lot more pleasing. And I would not have been able to get those lights if I was standing up photographing down because then I would just get the top of their heads right and of course the carpet or tiles of what they're preying on. So now going back to this original image again just work on being eye level with your subject and work with different angles to see which image looks more pleasing to you. Now one thing on editing that I want to talk about briefly is I think the photograph might be a tad bit overexposed and I think that there might be a tad bit too much contrast. So what I would suggest is to have on Lightroom your contrast be about 10% have your clarity about 15 to 20%. Have your textures be around 10 to 15%. Sharpen your images about maybe 60% or 50% to kind of give them more of that crisper look. And personally, I always add a little bit of vignette to my images, not too much, just something very subtly to kind of bring in the corners of the of the frame a little bit. And of course, adjusting your highlights and shadows to what's most appropriate for your image. I think that the white balance might also be a little bit too blue. I would make this image a little bit warmer just so there's more natural skin tones in the image. But don't go too far because we don't want an overly warm image that makes it look even more unprofessional. You just want to be cautious with the white balance to make your images look like they have nice skin tones. All right, onto the next image. All right, so we have a side photo of a family praying. Now, what I do like about this photograph here is that there seems to be a leading line from the daughter leading to the mom leading to the dad. That's the first thing I like. Now the thing is, is that it seems that the mom is the main subject of the photograph. Now you may think, but the entire family is there. And that is true, but the main subject is the mom simply because she's the only one doing anything in this image. If the daughter was raising her hands, and maybe if the husband was clapping his hands as well, then this would be a good family group shot. Since it's only the mom that's doing something, I recommend this. Now in this sample image right here, this was a family shot, but I felt that the mom was doing more than the two people next to her. So what I did was zoom in a little bit and use the person on her right to be the bit of the foreground, and then I used the person as the back. I had them be blurred out and out of focus. So I got in tighter to separate her from those two. And I think that was a much more pleasing image because you bypass the awkward poses from the other two when the person in the middle is the one you want to focus on. Now in this other sample photograph that I have of a family, I photographed more from the front. And one thing that I encourage you to look out for during your next church service is to photograph families praying together. And not just families, photograph friends praying together as well. Try to look for images to where the people that are praying together are very into it and very emotional. As you can see from this image right here, we have the father holding the mother and the mother is holding one of her daughters who's holding a tissue, right? After she wiped her ears from crying. And then another daughter is there as well, who's also being embraced by her mother. It's a very simple photograph, it's straight on, and immediately you get the sense that this family is unified and praying together. So now, when we go back to the original image, I think you can either have two options. You can either, one, crop in a little bit more to just focus on the mom, maybe using the daughter as a foreground, right? Or just step in front of them, of course not right in front of them, but maybe, you know, center left, center right, whatever, and try to get a straight on shot of the family or friends praying together or having that intimate moment together. Now going on to the next image, we have people in a white shot praying in church. I do like that wall in the background. I do, that's a pretty trendy look. I do like the colors a lot better in this one. There seems to be a much more natural skin tone. Now with the critiquing part of this photograph, it's a bit too wide for me. And what I mean by that is I see the pulpit with nobody there and there's a water bottle in the pulpit, which makes me think, okay, this didn't have to be part of the photograph. So now what we do now is we can just crop in the image a bit and just focus on the people in the audience. Now for me personally, I'm not a huge fan of mid shots that are at a distance. I personally like to get close to the action. Here's an example photo of what I'm talking about where I get really close to my subjects and I, I usually focus on the person who's in the, either on the far left or the far right. But what I do is try to get as close as possible and then fill the frame with the rest of the people who are in that line. It just makes the image look fuller and sometimes makes the place look a lot more packed than what it actually is inside the church. So with that, I encourage you to not take extremely wide photos unless that's the point of the photograph. If you're taking a wide photo of the entire church building, that's one reason to take a wide photograph. But for the most part, I would just get as close as possible and fill in that frame. It'll make your church look fuller and also make your church photos look more intimate. Now here's another photograph of people praying in church. And immediately the first thing that I liked was how everybody spaced out. There's a photojournalist that inspires me a lot. His name is Alex Webb. And when he studies photographs, he's really well known for spacing out his images and 
utilizing every corner of the frame. I definitely recommend his work, check him out and you'll see what I'm talking about. And I kind of got that similar vibe with this photograph. You have the lady in the foreground, you have a lady in the background, you have a lady in the very back in the sound booth, that's what it seems like. And then of course the two women in the front. So what I like is that my eyes bounce around to all the different corners of the image. Now from the critique standpoint, I see that at the bottom of this photograph, the woman's feet are chopped off. Now this is something that photographers have to be aware of because nobody really likes chopped off body parts unless you do it in a creative way like how we discussed earlier where you kind of use a portion of a person's body to be a foreground. And that's kind of what I get in this image where the person on the very far left is the foreground and everything else is fine but then when we get to the woman in the black dress it's just a bummer for me that her feet are cropped out. So what I would recommend is to focus on mid shots, mainly from the waist up. And even though people are spaced out, try to find one person in the image that could be used as the main point of the photograph. Here's a photograph that I took back when COVID first started and we were still allowed to meet in church. And as you can see, the man in the middle is the main focus of the image. But there are people around him that are spread out. They fill the frame. They give you a sense that the church is filled with people, but at the same time, the main focus is on him in the middle. And it's not a wide shot, it's a mid shot, pretty much around his waist and up. And this was achieved by me getting closer. Another example will be this photograph that was taken during a revival service. And same thing, there are people all throughout the image, but it's a mid shot that brings focus on the preacher on the right and the one praying on the left. It's not taken too far back where you see his feet. It's mid shot from his waist up to where you get closer to the action and see more emotion in their faces. So going back to the original image, if you're going to take a shot like this, I would recommend photographing from the waist up, or if you do decide to keep it this wide, just make sure that everyone's body parts, limbs, they're not cut off. Just focus on making the image clean. And again, I think the white balance might be a tad bit too blue. I would make it a couple notches a little bit warmer just for those natural skin tones. But overall, I think the editing is actually pretty good. It's not overly exposed and the highlights and shadows I think are pretty decent. So editing wise, I would think it's a pretty good job with just some minor tweaks. Just practice on the composition for wider photos such as that. Now the next photograph that they sent to me appears to be two girls sitting on their chairs. One appears to be praying on the far right but I can't tell if the girl in the middle is praying as well. Now the composition is actually not bad. I do like the guy in the background and I do like the people on the foreground and I like that they are placed in the middle, but I just keep asking myself what exactly is happening. Here's an example photograph that I took of the kids in our church that were taking communion and immediately I saw the emotion in their faces. I saw their hands being raised, so it's a great gesture and I didn't do anything too fancy. I just got really close to them. I centered myself and I bent my knees down to be eye level with them. And I just took a quick snap of just them lifting their hands up in prayer, worshiping God. Immediately you get this sense from this photograph, what's happening. They're in unison together, they're worshiping God together. Composition wise, that's what I'm gonna critique. And I think editing wise, I think that the image might be a tad bit overexposed as well. I think the contrast and everything is pretty much fine. It would probably just benefit more if you bring down the exposure a couple of notches. And that is the last one. Those were six images that this photographer sent to me to know my thoughts on. I genuinely think that there's a lot of potential with this photographer. The only two things that I really wanna make sure that they get is just understanding the difference of perspective and paying attention a little more in the details of their overall composition. I think that their editing is not bad. Just figure out the right white balance for skin tones. And I would just recommend not overdoing it with contrast, clarity, vignettes, stuff like that. I encourage you to keep going with this because it really just comes down to practice. The more services that you photograph, the more easier all these concepts will be to you and it'll just be second nature. So just keep practicing, practicing, practicing and I'm pretty sure that your pastor and your family and friends will be very pleased with, with what you have been able to produce in these coming weeks. And I really hope that this was helpful for those of you who are just starting to get into church photography. And if you're interested in having me look over your photographs and critiquing them, feel free to email me your images at michaelarisphoto at gmail.com. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you next time.